Come on. We will win. Because we will hit all game. We are motivated. We are dedicated. Come on now. Come on now. We will win. We are the best on the field. Then we hit the field like who? All day like who? All night like who? On the blue light who? On fist like who? Defense like who? This call like who? House call like who? And it sound like who? And it sound like who? And it sound like who? Welcome to the Short Sports Show. I am your host, Daniel Short. Today is Friday, June 16th, 2017. I hope everyone had a good week this week and last week. Last week, I uh, went out, served my community, did a few things uh, in San Marcos that were exciting, a learning experience that I absolutely love. Got to meet some great people and, uh, you know, it just kind of it kind of interfered with the show, so I just had to go and do that. But we are back, and I'm excited. This week, we got a jam-packed show, lots of the topics to discuss, a lot of interesting things in college football that are, um, I don't know, I don't know, it's just, it, it's thought-provoking, I can't even speak, thought-provoking, uh, that are, it, it's just really interesting to see what's going to happen and why things are happening. Um, of course, we're going to talk about the NBA Finals and something that I guess we somewhat saw but just didn't want to see. Like, we, we knew it was a good possibility. We just didn't want it to happen the way it did. And I'm, I'm not just talking about the Warriors winning. I'm talking about uh, it just going five games. Uh, it's, ugh, it was ugly. Uh, this weekend is Father's Day weekend. I'm going to go out hang out with my pops uh, today, actually. This afternoon, we're going to do some things. Uh, because you know how it is. You, you might as well get done, do it early because then Saturday and Sunday people are going out. It's everything's packed. And you have the opportunity to do it a little bit sooner. Might as well get it done. So hope everybody goes out and enjoys their day with their father. Uh, like I said, we got a lot of news. Are the LSU Tigers, are they paranoid with recruiting? Sure seems that way with Ed Orgeron now at helm. Uh, could Oklahoma State have a big year in 2017? A YouTube star and UCF kicker is taking on the NCAA. Very interesting here. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks, they need Russell Wilson to win. So why is there all this bickering and fighting? And LeBron James, could he leave Cleveland again? I, I, woo, I wanted to stay away from this topic, but, uh, this it's too much. It's too interesting to not talk about it. So we'll get into that late in the show. Uh, first, we're going to talk about some college football news. As always, uh, LSU head coach Ed Orgeron has been taking on criticism the past week as he's now being labeled paranoid. Uh, they were going to have a somewhat satellite camp. It's kind of iffy what you want to call it with the NCAA. Uh, Fox News uh, out of Jackson, Mississippi reported Wednesday that a camp. Bellhaven University uh, was supposed to hold in uh, this week in Louisiana is now being, well, it's not happening because Texas, Cornell, and a few other schools uh, were all going to join as well, like most of these, you know, big camps. And since it was in Louisiana and it was going to be held at apparently LSU, well, LSU canceled it. Ed Ordron did not want it to happen. Now, this is the third such accusation of LSU trying to keep out-of-state schools, including the Texas schools mainly, uh, and, and some of the other Power 5 schools like Michigan, away from their recruiting state, their, their satellite camps. Hal Mune, the head coach at Bellhaven U- University, said, quote, Paranoid Ed has kind of made it a real plain that he's not going to allow any schools outside uh, of the state to come in here and look at their players. I I think the NCAA needs to come in and look at it. I don't see how a public figure of an SEC school uh, can basically extort people from not using their facilities for the public good, end quote. Now, I think the most powerful quote that he had, the powerful statement that he uh, made uh, that I think many student athletes from the state of Louisiana can uh, relate to is this. You probably have three or four hundred kids a year that are capable of playing college football, but not all of them are going to make Division I. So not all getting looked at. Like I said, we had Cornell coming in from the Ivy League that would have presented some opportunities there. If you live in Louisiana and you don't live on I-10 or I-20, you probably live in a place that's fairly hard to get to, and a lot of these schools wouldn't come and go and look at you, end quote. Uh, So... 
with LSU doing this, they also had one of their six foot seven, three hundred pound offensive linemen transfer, uh, or le- wanting to transfer from LSU, and he wanted to transfer to TCU. Well, LSU declined it, and they declined. They they said uh, they will not allow a transfer f- for him to go to any SEC school or TCU. Uh, you know, I get it. Texas and Louisiana, they go at it for recruits. Louisiana pulls Texas kids. Texas kids, uh, you know, vice versa. But this is getting a little bit out of hand with Ed Orgeron now doing this. Uh, Les Miles never, have, never had a problem with this. He loved the camps. So why is Ed Orgeron now making sure that no Texas kid, no Texas coaches come down to Louisiana and hold these camps? You know, I, it's especially it's a Bell Haven University. I never heard of them until this story. So I mean, it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, they're just camps for the kids, and these it is a chance for these kids to get looked at and possibly go on. And and most of the time, I mean, if LSU is not looking at a kid, Texas is probably not looking at them. So I don't see what the big problem is with uh, with Ordron doing this. It's it, well, I do see a problem with this. I don't understand why he would do this. Uh, it's just very paranoid, like uh, from a head coach to do this. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this. Also, tweet me at Short Sports Show. You know, we made a video, uh, shoot, a couple months back uh, about the dark horse and top four for next year. It was a way too early type of thing, and we talked about Oklahoma State. Uh, some people agree, some people don't, which is fine. Uh, I have a really weird feeling that Oklahoma State is just going to win the Big 12 and, and be a dark horse into the top four next year. Uh, as a TCU fan, of course, I don't want that to happen, but look at the team. Look at the team. And I saw them live, and it's they're different. Uh, anyways, Mike Gundy and Oklahoma State agreed to a new five-year extension with annual automatic uh, rollout rollovers, I should say, on Tuesday. Now, at 49 years old, he's going to earn $4.2 million in 2017, an increase of 300000 and then an annual increase of 125000 after that. Uh, he's the longest tenured and winningest coach in Oklahoma State history with a record of 104 to 50, 63 and 39 in conference play, uh, since 2005. Now he's led his alma mater to 10 win seasons three of the past four years and including last year having a, um, another con, they've had 11 consecutive bowl uh, appearances, uh, under Gundy and now in his 13th season over there. Now, this is following after Gundy uh, told the Oklahoman in April that he wouldn't sign a new contract because he wanted to see a greater commitment from the school uh, in for the recruiting budget and salaries for assistant and supporting staff. Uh, apparently, now they got it. Uh, and it's, it's pretty cool to see now with Gundy. He is uh, the nation's fifth tenured longest coach there. Uh, he trails only Kansas State's Bill Snyder. He's been there for God knows how long. Uh, Gary Patterson at TCU, Kirk Ferentz at Iowa, and of course Nick Saban at Alabama. Now with p- potential uncertainty at OU and a really big year from Oklahoma State, they can flip things very quickly and be and just take over the state of Oklahoma uh, in terms of recruiting and, of course, uh, over on football. Uh, with a big year in 2017, Mason Rudolph is going to be probably one of the best, if not the best, quarterback in the Big 12. I know people are going to throw up Baker Mayfield, uh, but depending on the offensive system they run, Mason might throw up a little bit more numbers. And you also have Jason Washington, who might win the Belitnikoff Belitnik- Award excuse me, uh, for the best, best wide receiver. That guy is fast. He is the definition of fast in college football right now. Uh, Oklahoma State, again, their defense is top-notch. I'm just throwing it out there. They might flip the state. Lincoln Riley, of course, he's he's not a new guy, but new at head coach. Depending on what they can do at Oklahoma, how it flips with recruiting, Oklahoma State might be the one to watch out for in the Big 12. Now, on the flip side of this, Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield, he'll have to complete 35 hours of community service to participate in the university's alcohol education. Um, Mayfield was originally charged with public intoxication, uh, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and fleeing from his February uh, uh, arrest. Now, Mayfield, of course, has since apologized for the incident, noting that he has told him, hold himself to a higher standard. 
The rising senior has finished in the top five of the Heisman Trophy voting in each of the past two years and is a top contender for the award in 2017 after totaling 39,000 passing yards and 40 touchdowns last season. Now, one of the most uh, crazy things that have happened, and if you haven't really kept up with social media right now, you probably don't know too much about this because a lot of uh, big media, national media, is not picking this up, which they should, uh, because this is going to be a big story and really could change uh, or create a momentum, a wave for paying student athletes in the NCAA, and I know we hear, we hear this a lot, it seems like every offseason, but a new way. Now, vlogs have been a popular video trend on YouTube, and with the rise of former and, co- and current athletes recording their life on camera for hundreds of thousands of fans, it's become a new, a new trend in itself. Now, we all know that being a student athlete is tough as it is, but for a student athlete to find a way to explore their career... And make some money on the side and play football. Well, that's something the NCAA doesn't want them to do. University of Central Florida kicker Donald De La Haye quickly found out that he, uh, after he was found that out after he was called into the UCF's compliance office and was told to either quit making videos or quit football due to NCAA potential violations. Now, according to NCAA bylaw 12.4.4, a student athlete, quote, may establish his or her own business, provided the student athlete's name, photograph, appearance, or athletic reputation are not used to promote the business, end quote. So basically, you're, you're a ghost writer, right? You can't have any likeliness. You can't be you in your own business. Now, the problem with this is that the NCAA continues to promote their marketing and, com- and promote their, their commercials of, well, more than blank percentage go pro in something else other than sports. How many times have you heard that? Yet they can't do it while they're NCAA, in, in the NCAA because it'll jeopardize their eligibility and potentially can get the school in trouble, which then the school says, well, we got to worry about ourselves. So either you quit making videos or we're kicking you off the program where your scholarship is gone and you're no longer participating in football. I mean, what is that? It's terrible. Now more than half of Della Hayes uh, channel uh, his channel his YouTube channel is destroying uh, videos, touch on topics of kicking, which because he's a kicker. And campus life. Now, in other words, well, I just said that, you know, you could create anything, but your name and your likeness cannot be used. Now, he has over 50,000 subscribers, and, and I'm one of them. I found his account about a month back uh, when he had just around 15, 10,000 subscribers or so. And, and of course, it has jumped up. It's jumped another 6,000 uh, this past week just because of the story alone. And I enjoy his videos because they are entertaining. And yes, I found it a little bit more entertaining because it was an insight into a student athlete's life. And it's, 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 I don't, I don't know if entertaining is the right word. Uh, it's intriguing. It's interesting to see how each student athlete juggles campus life and, and football. You know, I, I've always found that pretty interesting to see how it is. Uh, now it's just, Whew, I don't know. Now, YouTube, of course, it allows you to create content and make money from it, just like what I'm doing, right? I make YouTube videos. I make money from them. I don't make a lot, but I do make money, um, and anybody can do it. Once you get a certain mon- uh, amount of videos, and I think YouTube now has a new rule that they uh, are now establishing. You have to have over 100,000 or no, over 10,000 uh, lifetime views before you can actually start making money. From them, so they, it changed a little bit. Um, thanks to you guys, we got over two hundred thousand lifetime views. So appreciate it. Uh, but anyways, um, you know it's a great way to make money. And I always wondered because vlogs are so popular uh, across YouTube. There, there's uh, a guy, Roman Atwood, uh, is his name. He's got over twelve million subscribers. Twelve million people are subscribed to him to watch. His life. He, he just records his day no matter what it is. It's not like it's always something he's going out and doing something some crazy that other people wouldn't do. It could just be him going to the store and spending time with his family. And over a million people watch that video. 
each video, over a million, two million. He's got some that are over 27 million. It's crazy. Uh, and, and I always wonder why wouldn't student athletes do that? It's, it, I can't be the only one to think it's interesting. Obviously not. 50,000 people also think it is. And this would be a great way for them to make money on the side instead of having to work in a, another kind of normal job that would just add stress. And sometimes they don't have time for that. This allows them to use the time that they are already have and make some money off of it. Now, Della Hayes said in a statement, quote, I feel like I'm owned by the NCAA. They can use my name and likeliness to make money off of me, but I can't. I'm not out here selling autographs. I'm not boosting that I'm a UCF player. Any other YouTuber with the same amount of subscribers would make the same amount of money as me. It's a senseless rule, in my opinion, especially in the age of social media, end quote. Now, on Saturday, De La Hoya uh, posted an emotional plea on his channel after receiving the news. Since then, he says he has barely slept and has had trouble focusing on schoolwork as he wrestles what, with deciding what to do next. Because this is his career. It's not like he was just doing this on the side. He's a marketing major. Uh, his dad was into videography. And he's been into videography since uh, he was 10 years old or so. So it just, this isn't something that's, he just said, oh, look, I can make money off this. Let me do it. This is something into his career. Now, for now, he's hoping that the school will help him apply for a waiver and that the NCAA will allow him to keep his scholarship and his earnings. An NCAA spokeswoman said on Tuesday that the organization hasn't received a waiver yet and wasn't currently reviewing the situation. Of course not. Uh, the NCAA is facing an increasing legal and public perceptions uh, pressure to allow student-athletes, of course, to earn income. Uh, particularly from their name and likeliness, a restriction that isn't applied to any other college students, uh, even those on scholarship. Now, on Friday, uh, this other news came out that former UNLV basketball players, uh, women basketball players, Dylan and Dakota Gonzalez, told a uh, news outlet their decision to forego their final year of eligibility to focus on their music careers um, and it was 90 to 95% quote due to NCAA rules end quote. That's crazy. So let me know what you think about this. Should student athletes get paid? I think so. And I think this would be a great way and it's not hurting anybody, but you know, the NCAA, they got to make the money. They got to make their money. Today's show is sponsored by Intergrind. Based out of Houston, Texas, let former Texas State linebacker Michael Rackpo help you reach your fitness and nutrition goals. With personal training classes that start at $40 a session, why not be a part of this rising program? Now, whether your goals are to lose weight, gain muscle mass, find the right off-season program, or even for you ladies out there to get that booty blast, you can do it all with Intergrind. Not a Houston area, not a problem. Intergrind has a program that is personalized just for you. Intergrind has everything you need to meet your personal and healthy goals. NFL linebackers like Titans Brian Arakpo, Chiefs Derek Johnson, Buccaneers running back Charles Sims, and San Diego Chargers cornerback Craig Mager, along with many other young athletes, have already begun. Find your personalized workout and nutrition plan at intergrind.com and call 832-475-2829. That's intergrind.com, 832-475-2829. Two eight two nine. Unleash your inner grind. Moving on to the NFL, Lions have traded for Rams uh, offensive tackle Greg Robinson. Yeah, that guy. Uh, and they also signed uh, offensive big, big offensive lineman Cyrus Quanjo on Thursday morning uh, to compete for the team's left tackle position after Taylor Decker had right shoulder surgery last week. Now, Robinson, if you remember him, he was the second overall pick in 2014 and had been demoted by Los Angeles. Uh, the Lions sent the Rams a 2018 six-round selection in return for Robinson. Now, at only 24 years old, he's played in 44 career games with the Rams, starting 40 of them. Now, Los Angeles had tried to move him before the draft and during draft day, uh, but they couldn't get it done. And now they've went ahead with only one year left on his rookie contract, shipped him out to Detroit. Atlanta Falcons running back Deontay Freeman, or excuse me, Devontae Freeman, uh, has said that he is not keeping an eye on other top running backs around the league 
kind of like Le'Veon Bell type-ish, uh, as Freeman eyes a new contract of his own. Now, Freeman, who's entering a final year of his rookie contract, uh, is set to make $1.797 million in 2017 and is expected to be rewarded with a long-term deal. His agent previously expressed the desire to see the two-time Pro Bowler paid like a, quote, elite running back. Meanwhile, Bell, who received a franchise t- tag of $12.1 million for the season, did not attempt minicap while unsigned. The Steelers have until July 15th to work out a long-term deal for Bell or else he will play under the franchise number. And if a long-term deal is reached, Bell's contract figures are certain to trigger a domino-like effect uh, for other running backs, including Freeman, and what he could be gauged on how much he is paid. Now, for Freeman, he was the first Falcons running back since Michael Turner the burner in 2010 and 2011 to post back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. Freeman deserves to get paid just a tad bit more, $1.7 million, uh, which, of course, is a lot to us normal people. Uh, but for football, an elite running back, that is awfully, awfully low. Seattle Seahawks, uh, well, their defensive end, Michael Bennett, is defending his quarterback on Wednesday, saying the Seahawks cannot win without Russell Wilson. Uh, Bennett said in an interview with 710 ESPN Seattle Brock and Sox show, quote, On a team with competitive people, there are going to be some issues that are going to happen, end quote. Uh, Or continuing to say, there's just a lot of alpha males running around, but everybody supports Russell Wilson. We can't win a game without Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is a top five quarterback in the NFL. We can't win a game without a guy like that, end quote. Now, the comments come weeks after ESPN Magazine released an article about Richard Sherman saying, uh, well, talking about the Super Bowl loss. Uh, and a division in the Seahawks locker room. Now, last week, Wilson called Sherman, quote, one of the best teammates he could ever ask for. Now, Sherman was asked about his that same relationship with the quarterback, and he said, quote, it's fantastic. We're teammates. It's a family. Everyone else on there is a family. We fight for one another. We have great appreciation for how tough our quarterback is and what he's played through, end quote. Now, he did not deny Wilson was treated any differently in the locker room with the coaching staff. Excuse me, not in the locker room, but by the coaching staff. But he downplayed the idea saying that every quarterback is treated somewhat differently on every team, which I think we agree with. A quarterback from peewee to, you know, the professional level treated somewhat different. I'm not saying better, but I'm just saying a little bit different than your other players. Uh, Now, whether the players realize it or not, uh, this could be the last run with this team. Uh, you have Cam Chancellor who's entering his final year of his contract, uh, and the Seahawks are con- have considered trading Sherman already. So, you know, a lot of guys can get split and could be parting ways here awfully soon. So this year is a very important year for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, the Seahawks have already used four draft picks on defensive backs this year. Uh, with the signaling of transition is happening and who sticks around, who knows what the salary cap. I mean, uh, there was interesting by uh, Seattle. I cannot think of, I think it was just ESPN Seattle, uh, their Twitter account asked, who would you want to keep on that secondary? Sherman, Chancellor, or um, Earl Thomas? And you could only pick one of them. Or excuse me, two of them. Who who would you who would be the left guy out? It's tough. That is a tough, tough pick for the Seahawks. So it might be their last run. Now I know this isn't a topic that a lot of people want to hear, especially Cavs fans right now. And to be honest, I didn't even want to talk about this because it is something that um it can get very ridiculous. But did a little bit of research. And I thought this was just pretty interesting just to bring up for a discussion. That's all. Just a discussion. Not saying it's going to happen. Not saying it should happen. But if it did happen, what's the best choice? And obviously, you've seen by the title, you know what this topic is about. Three years after LeBron James uh, returned to Cleveland Cavaliers at a shot of redemption, his future is once again up in the air. Uh, now, he uh, signed last summer, signed a three-year uh, $100 million deal with the Cavs with a player option in 2018. Now there's chatter over his free agency coming up at that time, where he should go, where he could go, could he be going out west. 
to the Los Angeles teams, either the Clippers or the Lakers, and what are the best choices? Now, Wednesday, Yahoo Sports reported that James Championship in Cleveland in 2016 had, quote, liberated, end quote, uh, him to leave again, and that many people thought it was likely for him to pursue one of the Los Angeles teams. Uh, quote, I think within Cleveland and around the league, they feel that uh, he is very much in play to leave again and likely head out west uh, to one of the L.A. teams. The Lakers could well uh, could very well be the target, end quote. Now, the, of course, the Warriors who won the NBA championship again are in the sum, are poised in the summer to lock up. You know, you have Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, Iguodala, and Livingston. And until at least 2019, this team's going to be intact. And then the Cavs, meanwhile, they have no cap space and really no ways to improve the team other than hopefully maybe the draft. I don't even know if they have a pick in the draft. Uh, while the cat, while the James, uh, has not op- has not really discussed about leaving the Cavs, uh, of course, which he would not. He has talked about forming his own some- somewhat super team with some of his best friends in Dwayne Wade, uh, Car- Car- Carmelo Anthony, and Chris Paul. Now he told Bleacher Report back in 2016, quote, I really hope that before our career is over, we can all play together at least one, maybe two seasons. Uh, we can get a year in. I would actually take a pay cut to do that. You heard that. Uh, I would be. Pre- it would be pretty cool. I've definitely had thoughts about it. Now, of course, throughout the entire trade, uh, before the trade deadline last season, uh, this past season, I should say, we all thought, would Carmelo Anthony join the Cavaliers? Would it happen? The Knicks didn't want him. He doesn't want to be with the Knicks. He does want to stay in New York, but... Not with the Knicks, apparently. Uh, and it was all this other crazy stuff that he might go to Cleveland and join LeBron James. Of course, that never happened. Now, before people go crazy in the comment section, you probably already have, and that's fine. If LeBron is serious about leaving Cleveland again, and if he fails, which, look, Cleveland's going to make the NBA Finals again next year. It's just going to happen. It, it, they're going to make it. Possibly going against the Warriors again. If they lose again, I think he leaves. I think he leaves. Now, when he's thinking about leaving, he should consider this. Now, as a Lakers fan, yes, I would love him to join Los Angeles. And I wish he would have done it back when Kobe was still there. Because, okay, sorry. I wish that could have happened. It didn't. It's not going to. Kobe's not coming back. (laughs) But if he is serious about this, and it should be about winning rings, not necessarily just getting out of Cleveland and making some money because he's going to have to deal with potentially becoming a villain again. I think it's going to be, it's obviously going to be less than what it was the first time he left because he did come back, did fulfill that promise of winning a championship in Cleveland, their first ever. And he did it. And he's been to the finals with them over and over again. And it, One man can only do so much, regardless of your argument, if he's the best ever. I don't care. If he's he's serious about winning rings, the Los Angeles teams are not the way to go. The Clippers are not. They're probably going to implode here this offseason. Lakers, God bless them, I love them. Not going to happen. It's got to be San Antonio. And here's and here's how it happens. Before he said, "Well, they don't have any cap space." Well, they're they're about to. They're about to. And it's funny. I talked to all these Spurs fans. Oh, they're not letting go of anybody. They're going to keep them all. You'd be surprised how the business works. Now he could have at least one of his best friends join if he joins San Antonio, and that's Chris Paul, who's been rumored to go as well. Now he can come this off season and let's see what they can do. Uh, and it doesn't make much sense for the Spurs to gut their entire team. And pay Chris Paul because he's not going to guarantee them uh, to get over the hump over the Warriors. We saw even when Kawhi went down and even when he was there, yes, they had that big lead. That's just one game. And I think even if you had Chris Paul, it's not going to be a sweep. They're not going to dominate them, not going to win them in, in five games in that series. It was going to continue to go potentially seven games in that series. But he's not going to get them over the hump. But, as things stand, Leonard is the only player in the Spurs roster that's guaranteed to be on the payroll in 2018 and 2019 season. Both Aldridge and Danny Green have player options that they'll likely exercise to uh, to dive back into free agency. Danny Green almost left to go to Cleveland a couple years back 
Aldridge, that experiment really hasn't worked. Uh, he's just he's just a big teddy bear. He's soft. Paul Gasol is I don't know what he was doing. Uh, he, he's he's done. He's out of juice. Tony Parker is going to be gone. Ginobili will be gone. There's no reason for the Spurs to sign Aldridge, uh, and given how everything's gone out, now that would give San Antonio the cap room to go and sign LeBron. Yes, to a max deal. Go to SportTrack.com. It can happen. Uh, in that scenario, after pay, even after paying Chris Paul to come on the team, so you could have Chris Paul, Kawhi Leonard. And LeBron James. And LeBron James with a max deal. Now, then the Spurs could then give Kawhi Leonard a max extension. So now you have Leonard and LeBron James both on a max deal. Obviously, Leonard would have more years, but both at a maximum deal. Chris Paul likely would have to be the guy to take a pay cut. But with him never have won a championship nor been to a finals, he might be inclined to do that. Uh, and that would really rival any big three in the NBA. Now, uh, now let's say LeBron James doesn't want to take anything less than the max. Well, or excuse me, it would take less than the max. Now, now you can mess with numbers, and this gets really fun. So then San Antonio could potentially, if, let's say LeBron James takes a pay cut as well. Chris Paul takes a pay cut. They can still give Kawhi an extension, uh, a massive extension. Now you can try to convince either Paul George or DeMarcus Cousins to join the team as well. Yes, the numbers do work, ladies and gentlemen. If they say no, then you can then look for some cheaper veteran options. You need, you need a big guy. Brooke Lopez, Zach Randolph who has always been physical with the Spurs, but always had respect with them uh, with all those battles, he could come and join the team. And even in a worst-case scenario, the Spurs could develop a rookie cast uh, to protect the rim, some, some big guys that can just go and just draft some bigger guys. LeBron would be better off with the Spurs than he would be with Cleveland. Um, because, I mean, do you really think LeBron couldn't win a championship with Popovich? Come on now. Uh, so how realistic is all of this, you're probably asking, even though I've given you the numbers. There's only two things that stand in LeBron James's way of actually joining the Spurs. And that's loyalty and his power. Now, again, he's already fulfilled his commitment, his promise to the city of Cleveland, his hometown in Northeast Ohio, to win and bring a championship. He's done that. He's done all he can do. He's got... Kyrie Irving, one of the best guards, arguably the best guard in the NBA right now. And he has Kevin Love, who is pretty solid. All-star. And he still can't win. Maybe it's time for him to go somewhere else. Now, for now, James is a Cavalier. The team's offseason focus will be finding uh, some pieces and trying to move the numbers around to, to compete with the Warriors because it wasn't competitive at all. It was not. If you look just at the score, you would say so. If you actually watch the game, second half is always a complete different story. So James Future is once again going to be the talking point all throughout this season and, of course, into 2018 and what he decides to do. Uh, you know, I'm kind of on the fence with this. You know, I... I could see where he just doesn't leave at all because if he leaves, he, he risks being that villain once again. And with already this debate about him being whether he's better better or not better than Michael Jordan, his finals record, this argument of, oh, now he's got to go join the super team and wherever because he couldn't win at Cleveland. The fact that any player has to go join the super team like they already have with Kevin Durant going to the Warriors – uh, to win a championship is already a terrible thing for the league in itself. But it's looking like what's going to happen. And if that does happen, God bless the East Conference. If LeBron James heads to San Antonio, the NBA championship is really the NBA Western Conference Finals. That's what it will be. Because Boston, if you... oh, oh You already know. I didn't even explain it. East Conference. I don't know. The NBA is... Seriously? Last statement here, the NBA's really got to look at reseeding and just changing uh, the basketball landscape by doing what the NFL does. Make it American League versus National League, I guess. Uh, you can rename it if you want. 
and just having the divisions of West, East, North, South in each conference because this is going to be ridiculous. Um, now, I know they're not you know, going off of LeBron James leaving, going to the West Coast, but it's already bad in itself. It, the Eastern Conference is really the Cavaliers or wherever LeBron James is playing conference. The West is, who knows, kind of the Warriors right now, but San Antonio went healthy. Houston, if they get a little bit, I don't know, they need a lot as well. But that's just something I want to talk about. Numbers can make it happen. Let me know in the comment section, do you think LeBron James stays in Cleveland in 2018 and beyond? Or does he head out west? Or does he head out east and go back to Miami and reunite with Dwayne Wade? And Dwayne Wade might leave Chicago. That didn't work out. Let me know in the comment section down below. Tweet me at Short Sports Show and become a fan on Facebook, The Short Sports Show. That's it for today's show. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you're brand new to this channel, hit that subscribe button as well. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys next Friday morning with another video. As always, God first, God bless. I'm out. Peace.